a look at the screen here, you can see there's a Procreate video of some mascots I drew. I first drew them in like Vector, but they're just a little bit too perfect and I just want to roughen the roughen the style up a little bit, make it a little bit more natural looking, you know? So I took my I actually started in Adobe Illustrator, then went to Procreate and then took it back into Illustrator. So it's quite a funny process. But anyway, it's, if you see the video here, you can see I'm using I'm using these um, like comic art brush set that I bought uh, bought it on Gumroad, and yeah, the brushes are pretty pretty natural, pretty quick to draw with. They give like a more natural feel than than some of the cleaner like brushes you get on Photoshop and that. So I was pretty happy with the with the style I was getting. Okay, so if you see how I'm going doing the girl and um yeah she's i was pretty happy with her and then you can see i've started or the the guy's actually supposed to be it's me but um yeah i was pretty happy with his body everything only thing i wasn't happy with was his face okay but you'll see right at the end of this little sketch up and procreate you'll see how it fixes expression it's just a little bit too static and blank for me over here and I just wanted him to look a little, just have a little bit more character and a little bit more life to him. You'll see how that came together in the end. Um, yeah, uh, this is a, I love drawing in Procreate on my, on my iPad. It's so cool. I mean, such a, so lucky to have an iPad and, a, and so lucky to be able to sit and draw on it. It's, it's really cool. And I hope to always be able to be able to afford them and stuff. They're really good products. I mean, I'm way preferred to drawing on a on a computer on a Cintiq and that. Um, yeah, okay. If you can see now, I'm starting to to fix up the expression, giving it a little bit more attitude, a bit more interaction with the girl. Much much happier with that. If you see that, I flipped the canvas just to see to see that things were still looking good. And right now you can see this is finished. I'm about to bring it into I'm about to bring it into Adobe Illustrator to well to actually use the auto trace tool. I'm gonna to auto trace these these lines that I drew yeah, just to give it a bit more of a natural feel. You'll see now in part two. Okay, part two. I, as you can see, I've taken the the line art that I drew in Procreate. I imported it onto my onto my Mac, and then I copied it from Photoshop and then posted it in uh, in, in in Illustrator. You can see now the the live trace tool has just made a made a rough trace of it. Now uh, you just want to refine this tracing. Just uh, get it as good as you can. You don't want to just use the default result. Okay, so I just play around with the threshold, take it down a bit, wait for it to redraw. Hmm. Maybe it needs just to be a touch thicker, just take it above the 128 where it was. Let's try that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, now we click the advanced tab and we just want to give, give it as much detail as we can. Take it up to about 91%. Have a look at that. That looks pretty good. Bring the corners up a little bit. Uh, let's have a look how that looks. Pretty cool. Um, okay, now we just adjust the noise. Take it down a little bit. Uh, the all these settings you can play with and just get get what looks best for you. Okay, now this tick here, this snap curves to lines. I learned that from Chris from Blogspoon Graphics. It's actually pretty. Imp I mean, in this one it doesn't make that much of a difference, but I've noticed in when you scan textures and stuff, it makes a heck of a difference to to use that. It just gives it so much more of a natural look and not these like sharp, hard corners. Okay, so now that I'm happy with the with the trace result, I expand it, and then I'm ready to to do the coloring part in Illustrator, which is uh, use mainly the pen tool for that. Okay, I'll see you later in part three. Okay, so now I've got my uh, traced lines. What I do is duplicate the layer and then just turn off 
uh, turn off the visibility and lock the top layer. And then I make a live paint from the bottom layer. And then um, once I've done that, I just add a random a random color like this orange here. Uh, once that's added, I can see the I can see the silhouette of the character, which is pretty important. See that it's working. Okay, then I expand the the live paint, and then I go in and start working. Um, now I'm just giving you a disclaimer, like straight up, this is going to look a bit messy in the beginning, but it the end goal was to get this certain style that I was looking for, and this is the way to way to go about it. It's quite a different way. In the beginning, you know, it, it looks like a little bit messy and a little bit clumsy, but at the end, it, I got it exactly the style that I was looking for. And you can just see uh, how I did this, yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna do the first four minutes or so of how I started the, the final artwork, which I'm gonna show you. I'll show you the final vector artwork colored quite soon. Um, the end result that I went for, if you remember the original Grand Theft Auto games, I like the coloring style and lighting of that. I tried to get something pretty close to that and I was pretty happy with it in the end. Okay, but now if you see what I'm doing here, now I'm just separating the shapes a little bit, starting to choose colors for each each part. I'll turn the I'll turn the line work back on shortly on the top layer because yeah, it could otherwise it gets confusing. Um yeah, right now it's not I mean it's looking very very messy and a long way to go. But this is the this is the process that that it takes. Uh the part that but time consuming and yeah you just gotta have a bit of patience here okay i'm starting the eyes now decided to give it brown eyes uh just drawing drawing in the shapes with the pen tool um i use when i color i use three three main tools in illustrator I use the pen tool i use the eraser tool and then sometimes the blob brush tool i didn't use that or i actually did use it quite a lot in this illustration but in this section i'm showing you I just mainly use the pen tool and the I and I use the eyedropper tool. That's that's quite important. Okay, so if you can see what I've been doing here, um, because the illustration is loose and there's some gaps in the line work, and I want it that way, I don't want to change that. Um, I have this technique where I just um, copy and paste in front, and then I choose the red color. You see if, if you see their face turned red just a minute, a few seconds ago. And I just use the eraser tool, which is Command E on a Mac, and I delete the the sections I don't want. You can see I'm doing it on a shirt now. I've just got the eraser tool, and I'm just erasing the parts of red that I don't want, and then the shirt shows up underneath. Uh, yeah, just for the style, this is necessary. I know if the line work was uh, more perfect and more uh, and perfectly joined, I wouldn't need to be doing this. But this is just a way to do it when you want to get this effect. And they are like the more the looser, more natural looking effects. You do need you need do need to go about it this sort of way to get the end result. Um, okay, so now I use I just fixing up some of the points that were a little bit off, and now I start deleting some of the shapes like under arm. Okay, this is the last little part I'm going to do now before I show you the final illustration. And how I thought it was pretty, it turned out pretty cool, pretty much how I wanted it. And I'm the final client for this thing, so I didn't get any art director telling me do it this way, do it that way. I could choose basically what I wanted. And I was much happier with this end result than another version that I did a couple of weeks ago, which ended up being just too, too crisp and too victory. I quite enjoyed this one because in the end it, it had much more character. Okay, I'm gonna go show you the final one now. Here it is. Okay, let me just uh, let me zoom in a bit. You can see uh, with the line work, I just made it a more natural, like off black color, and you can just see how it, I think uh, it turned out pretty cool. That's that's the effect I was going for. And then here's the Photoshop version. I did a Photoshop version too using like textured brushes, and yeah, this is ju just another option to have. Uh, but I. Uh, also, it was almost for like a case study that I was doing on Behance, and yeah, so I just it's just a comparison of the two. It's quite interesting though, because you can see quite a lot of difference when when you zoomed in, but uh, yeah, when that's small, because uh, I did I, on a business card, I did the, I did these characters, and on the business card, 
Yo, at a small size, you could barely tell the difference between the two. But then obviously above sort of five or six centimeters, then you start seeing the textures come through stuff on the Photoshop one. But anyway, this is, this is the little journey I've had going back and forth between Procreate and Illustrator. And yeah, Photoshop was in there too, but that wasn't part of this video. That's for, I can do that some other time. Uh, thanks for, thanks for watching the video. And be sure to check out my next video coming up soon. And one more thing, uh, I've just started a, a page on Society6, started a shop, did my first upload there. Uh, if you want to go check that out, uh, I'll just leave the, I'll leave the link in the description below. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Bye.